Hi, my name is Greg Busick. I'm president of IHL Group. Uh, we're a small boutique analyst firm based in Franklin, Tennessee. You know, last several years, the retail has seen incredible jump in sales thanks to government inputs after the COVID pandemic. And as a result, we made huge numbers of increases in sales without the ability to add personnel. In fact, we added tremendous, almost $2 trillion worth of sales with about 3 million fewer workers. And so how do you grow from here? And that was the premise for our study. And we looked at retailers have to do more with less. So when we were looking at a technology like AI, our first reaction was, how's the best way to look at this? So we took the income statement and we went, what's the impact on sales? What's the impact on better gross margins? And what's the impact on reduced cost through sales and general administrative expenses? So that was our first level. Then we had to look at it by type of AI. Is it gonna be the traditional AI and machine learning or is it gonna be this new generative AI or is it this future alternative general intelligence that may be coming down the line? And so we took a stab at putting that together and we wanted to look at it at 13 different segments around the world. And the results are massive. Our forecast is upwards of $9.2 trillion of potential impact through the end of the decade worldwide. Now in the Americas region, that's about $3.2 trillion worth of total impact overall. Yeah, no question that we're very optimistic about the impact of AI in the industry, 3.2 trillion in the US. I think we're seeing 660 billion conservatively in productivity gains. You think about any AI infused process is gonna lead to two and a half times more profit so that's where that value is being created. And then, you know, what I love best is for every dollar spent, uh, retailers are going to find about three and a half dollars in return on that. So quite a bit of uh, momentum in the market right now. And I think uh, it's safe bet to say that uh, investing in AI is going to be good for all retailers. I think the unknown here is really that AI can help improve the analytics and personalization. However, one of the bigger challenges retailers are facing is labor and customer service this isn't going to go away just based on addition of AI. So I think that's where the wild card comes in is, you know, the labor force. I mean, other than that being a staggering amount of money and us in the U.S. being able to take, you know, a third of that um, in terms of market opportunity, I think it really suggests a transformative shift towards AI-driven solutions and strategies, which is super exciting. So for us, as we're thinking about it, it means, you know, potentially a substantial increase in efficiency and personalization and innovation across various retail operations. Um, it's an exciting prospect, which really could redefine the retail landscape and open up up tons of new opportunities for growth and advancement in the sector. Um, I think also most importantly, it's a call to action for retailers to start adopting and integrating AI technologies to stay competitive in this rapidly evolving market and the potential for AI to drive operational excellence and enhance customer experiences is vast, obviously. 9.2 trillion seems like a, like a staggering number, but the potential for AI to drive economic growth in retail is clear. It promises to usher basically an era of more intelligent data-driven decisions, making processes and customer engagement strategies. This could really redefine the retail landscape, making it more responsive and personalized to customer needs. The integration of AI in retail is expected to optimize operations, enhance customer experiences, and ultimately contribute to sustainability efforts, which we all want. Traditional AI and machine learning. This is the type of AI where you have to have clean data that's tagged and abundant. And that is gonna be the vast majority of benefits throughout the decade there. Later in the decade, we'll start to see generative AI mostly benefiting on top of that traditional AI and machine learning to grow that uh, business and that business impact going forward. And then later in the, in the decade, we expect to see things like this artificial general intelligence, will, which will start to come into the equation later uh, in the decade. So when you think about it, where is the big benefits gonna come from? Well, right now in 2023 and 2024, the benefits are coming from that hard work where we've done the blocking and tackling of getting our data right and doing iteration after iteration after iteration to find the improvements. That's where the vast majority of the benefit is going to be for the rest of the decade there. Later in that decade, however, we're gonna see the generative AI impact that. 
So while today 91% of the benefit comes from traditional AI and machine learning, later in the decade, we expect to see 78% of the benefits coming from generative AI as they build on top of those building blocks of the traditional AI and machine learning. Now, there are four main segments that we think are going to be the big beneficiaries of AI. Number one, by far, is the pure play e-commerce sector. And the reason for this is they only have one channel that they have to worry about. Thus, their data by nature is cleaner, which is huge when it comes to getting the benefits from AI. The next category is the grocery segment. And the reason for that is you're dealing with a UPC code only. Everything has a single code uh, for each item there. Next would be your mass merchants and uh, super centers. Those guys have huge scale. So your hypermarkets, your super centers, they have huge scale. Most of their business is business. We are now starting to introduce clothing, which now adds skew and color and sizing into the equation. So there's more complexity. Hard goods is the next category where you have the benefits of, once again, UPC codes, again, in that environment. So you have multi-channel that takes advantage, though, of a single type of code. That is where the key benefits are. And then all the other segments make up the remaining 25% of the benefits. Now, those benefits are spread across several lines of business. We believe the number one area of improvement and benefit is going to be through systems that are supply chain related. So when you look at things like line of business area, where are the main beneficiaries of AI inside the retail chain? Number one is the supply chain, and it's going to be the merchandising and supply chain systems that will see the biggest benefit from AI going forward. The other one that's obvious is sales and marketing. Although we're going to see benefits and probably even more benefits in many other areas like infrastructure and e-commerce, the sales and marketing and the ability to personalize offers to consumers is going to have a major impact on retail benefit going forward. So if you look at the graphic for the Americas in particular, you're going to see a crossover that occurs with generative AI later in the decade. I believe it's 2028, 2029, where we're showing more benefits from generative AI at that point. The reason we see the generative AI cross over and be the main driver of AI benefits in the Americas is mostly because of the United States. There is a much larger population of retailers that are a billion dollars in annual sales or higher versus the rest of the world. And when it comes to AI, scale matters. And that is the biggest driver of why we're going to see this benefits as well. The U.S. has a head start in this technology compared to the rest of the world. Many of the leading companies are based here and access to that technology, as well as planning for AI and doing a lot of that hard work with the traditional AI, much more so than we've seen in other parts of the world. When you combine those all together and when you factor in, we give the benefit to generative AI, even though a lot of that hard work or the stepping stone was the traditional AI and machine learning, we get these double benefits that start to occur faster in the Americas thanks to this population in the United States. One is just sheer size of the market. It's, it's a much smaller market overall um, compared to what we're seeing in the U.S. and Canada. And what we mean by that is not that there's not a big retail market. It's just that in the U.S. there's just a lot more big retailers that can benefit than you have in Latin and South America. The second thing is banking differences. These banking differences like physicalization in Brazil can help or hurt the adoption of AI there. If you get more consistent data because you're doing, have these regulations, that can be a benefit. In other cases where you don't have as clear data, that could be a negative. You do a lot more conversational commerce and live streaming in Latin America than we have in the U.S. right now. The U.S. is in Canada is actually way behind the rest of the world when it comes to conversational commerce and live streaming. Uh, it's far more appreciated in other parts of the world. The next thing is the highly concentrated population in urban environments that you see in Latin and South America. And oftentimes that comes with crime, which means it's, it's not necessarily safe to go to the store and carry all your items back. So e-commerce is a much larger part of the actual sales process and total sales in Latin and South America. That being said, when you start talking about AI, you've got to factor in what is the cost of this technology. It's not cheap. 
and, and the labor is much cheaper in Latin and South America than we find in the US and Canada. And in particular, the availability of labor that is trained on AI or familiar with AI is quite expensive. So in many cases, the benefits that, you, that AI brings to some of these workers may not be as acute because of the cost of the AI versus the cost of the human labor in that environment. So when we did the study, we wanted to look at, once again, through the income statement. So the first area we looked at was the increase in sales opportunities. What is the value of adding one to two additional more sales per year or one more item per transaction for a retailer? And the end result is it's a huge impact on the sales of most retailers. By increasing that uh, market basket, what you're doing is reducing the amount of fixed costs that you have on a per item or per basket basis. You're already paying for those fixed expenses. So by adding those items into that transaction, whether it's personalized marketing there or whether it's uh, marketing through the app in premise or on an e-commerce transaction, that increased sale has a huge return financially as a result. The second area was we looked at was how do we improve gross margins? And this is where we believe there are great benefits as a result of efficiencies that can be brought to the supply chain and distribution system. This starts with supplier negotiation. Walmart has already saved 3% with their uh, suppliers of store fixtures by using generative AI models to negotiate with live people on the other end. They not only saw that they lowered their cost, but the people on the other side, their suppliers actually rated the conversations higher and a better negotiations that they don't have in the past. And the reason for that is the AI doesn't have a bad day. It doesn't have a sick child. It doesn't get frustrated with the negotiation. It continually looks for a yes. So that's number one. Number two is demand forecasting. You can run a lot more scenarios with AI than a human being can do today with that. Inventory optimization, having the right amount of inventory in the right locations is another huge area where we have a lot of inefficiencies in the market today. Worldwide, we see up to $1.9 trillion in losses due to inventory distortion, which is the cost of overstocks and out of stocks. So AI can provide huge improvements here. Routing and logistics. And then finally, the knowledge worker. This is where we see generative AI going to excel. Um, and with generative AI, you have the opportunity to automate routine tasks and the ability to, for a single person to support many, many more uh, opportunities. We see between zero and 100% gain when AI is applied to uh, different tasks. So that is a huge opportunity, whether it's simply supporting more locations per person or simply reducing the, the cost there. So when you think about marketing again, although that's a sales growth task, the cost of that is often in the SG&A expense. And as a result of personalization, the tools that allow you to mass customize and personalize offers can have a huge impact. And the time it takes to do that has been greatly reduced using generative AI tools. The HR area is another area that probably has the single biggest uh, use of AI, where can generative AI can be involved, whether it's screening applicants, whether it's providing a chat pot for associates to, to talk about their benefits or opportunities, or it's even streamlining payroll when you have vast number of branches throughout the organization. All of those benefit by using AI, et cetera. Better scheduling tools, being able to schedule your people with the right hours on things. We've done it traditionally with a lot of algorithms and analytics. Now you have the ability to provide AI in that and the systems will get better and better and better. And then finally is security there, the ability to play defense because one of the things that's happening with generative AI is we're seeing a massive increase in the threat vector and the number of threats coming to each retailer. With generative AI, you can use the AI to play defense and much more effectively identify where there are, are weaknesses and plug those weaknesses. And then if somebody gets some sort of virus on their machine to completely shut that down, shut off their network access very, very quickly because the AI will recognize that, that abnormal behavior much faster than a human being trying to monitor a network would be.
when people use AI in their solutions, we're seeing dramatic impact in performance. Those that use AI, we studied 11 different categories of systems. When they use AI in those systems, they saw sales improvements that were 2.3 times higher than those that were not using AI in those systems. And they saw profit growth two and a half times higher than those environments versus those who were not using it.